So, every day in Passion Week has its own name, which signifies the Old Testament fulfillment of that day during Passion Week. Of course, there is Palm Sunday. Uh, most Christians are aware of Palm Sunday. There is Fig Monday, the day on which Jesus cursed the fig tree. Uh, there is Holy Tuesday, and most scholars, commentators seem to think nothing really significant happened on Tuesday. So they just went, ah, it's Holy Week, let's call it Holy Tuesday. I don't know if that's the way the name came about, Holy Tuesday, or not. Then you have Spy Wednesday, supposedly the day Judas agreed to spy on Jesus. Then you have Maundy Thursday, uh, where Jesus stands before Caiaphas. You have Good Friday, the day on which Jesus Christ gave his life. You have Black Saturday, which is the Sabbath, uh, where the band Black Sabbath gets its name. That's this Saturday, Black Sabbath, right? And then Resurrection Sunday. Now, on Fig Monday, Jesus cursed the fig tree. And most commentators seem to think that when Jesus cursed the fig tree, uh, that fig tree was representative of Israel and Israel's unbelief. Uh, and he told his disciples that they too would do what he did to the fig tree. And in fact, they would be able to cast mountains into the sea. A symbolism that in the Old Testament prophets meant nations being cast down. Of course, in their mind, this is Rome. Uh, oh, we're going to be able to cast down Rome. This is cool. But in reality, Jerusalem would be destroyed in AD 70. Rome would eventually perish uh, as a direct cause, I think, of the preaching of the gospel. Uh, it is the peaceful means of preaching the gospel, which would bring down the oppressive nation of Rome, the nation that oppressed Christians. And so Jesus is fulfilling what, what we see him promise to fulfill on Palm Sunday, on Fig Monday, he is affirming his promise, but he's also announcing the unbelief of Israel and of the nations. I want to read to you from John's gospel again. This is John chapter 12, verses 37 and 38, just so we can get a picture of the unbelief, unbelief that Jesus was truly the Messiah and truly came to do what the Old Testament prophets foretold the Messiah would come and do. Verse 37, John chapter 12. But though he had performed many signs before them, yet they were not believing in him. Jesus made the claim, yet the people were not believing in him. Jesus was proving himself, yet the people were not believing in him. Verse 38, this was to fulfill the word of Isaiah. The, the prophets foretold that the people would not believe the Messiah when the Messiah came. Uh, according to John, yeah, verse 38, this was to fulfill the word of Isaiah the prophet, which he spoke. Lord, who has believed our report? The prophets had the same frustration that Jesus had when it came to the belief of people, the belief of Israel and the belief of the nations. In fact, the Jewish people, Israel, they killed the prophets. They killed them in Jerusalem, right? This was to fulfill the word of Isaiah the prophet, which he spoke, Lord, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? So the Messiah comes uh, promising to end oppression. And if you didn't see the Palm Sunday episode, please go watch the Palm Sunday episode. Otherwise, this isn't going to make much sense to you because you're working with the cultural definition of Easter and, and the, the churchy definition of, uh, of Passion Week and Resurrection Sunday, uh, which is about more than just a simple resurrection from the dead and the mere um, eschatological uh, salvation, ethereal salvation of God's people. It's about the renewal of the whole earth. Uh, it's about ending oppression and bringing peace, ending war, uh, causing the nations to beat their swords into plowshares. Like that's what Easter is about. It, it is about seeing peace come in a very real way through the work of the church, through the proclamation of the gospel. When we go out proclaiming the gospel and inviting people into the kingdom of Christ, it's more than just, hey, you want to have eternal life? It Quite literally, we're saying, hey, come join this movement. You see the chaos all around. You see how the world is tearing itself apart at the seams. Come join this Christian movement. It is the Christian movement and the proclamation of a gospel between of peace between God and people and the upbuilding of the saints. 
um, that is how we're going to see the world renewed, um, not not through the means of worldly politics, worldly governments, world religions, worldly religions, and not through any of that, only through King Jesus. Um, and his kingdom started at his inauguration on Palm Sunday. But some of the Jews, many of the Jews were not believing that the Messiah had come. And this was to fulfill what the prophet Isaiah wrote. Now, when I look around at the world today, and I look around at the state of the church today, the state of theology today, and the state of politics today, um, the state of uh, legislation today, uh, the state of uh, the a- executive branch of our government today, uh, and the and the state of our uh, judiciary branch today in, in the United States, and then around the world as I see all of the corruption of of world leaders, and I look at the effects um, of things as, as simple as, and, and everybody, like social justice is a term that sounds great, but then I even, even think about like uh, how much damage that is really doing and how much, how much racism that is causing, even though it claims to be a cure for racism. It's like every single worldly way of doing things and every single worldly philosophy, every single worldly politic, every single world re- worldly religion does exactly the opposite of what it claims to accomplish. Uh, even the Roman Catholic Church saying all peace to all people everywhere, like and, and affirming everything that people want to do now, the preferences of, of people and Pope Francis and this movement that he has going in the in the Roman Catholic Church. Even that's causing more harm than good, and, and you just observe it and you see the evidence and how much damage um, things like that are doing. Uh, how racialization is like the new racism of our day, and how intersectionality and critical race theory uh, are brand new forms of racism and sexism, um, worse than I have seen in my lifetime, which is kind of crazy. Uh, we've talked about on a on a different episode of Blacktop Pulpit and on the ninety five, I think. How those movements basically are are taking us back two hundred years. It's not it's not progress. It's it's regress, um, back to a time before the uh, Equality Act was signed. Right, um, where now it's we're returning to a state of social Darwinism, and that social Darwinism is causing communities and families to tear themselves apart, and children have been taken from the home. Um, and I, I think as a nation, we've gone about as as far as we can go in that direction without just fully destroying ourselves as a nation in the United States. Uh, What a time to be talking about the prophetic vision of of Easter, the resurrection. What a time to be talking about the fulfillment of Passover in our time, because we've shown or we've seen that the answer isn't in human politics, whether Republican or Democrat. That's not where the answer is. Uh, That's not what is going to move the world forward anymore. We can we can see that. It's it's perspicuous now. Um, it is not in worldly religion, religion that tells you, hey, just be a good enough person and just love your neighbor. Um, if that's all our religion is and do these good things, do these ritual acts of, of kindness, um, be be good to the world around you, man, just be a caring person, um, just, just build others up. And that sort of religion, like every religion seems to get at that in some way uh, from a different direction or or they have a different way of, of promoting something like that. But that kind of worldly religion is, is being shown not to actually work. How many religions do we have in the world and still the world is a messed up kind of place, right? Um, and then you have the Bible, which comes in and says something radically different. And it's going it's it's radically new to our ears today because we we haven't we haven't heard this stuff in our in our time. The gospel was forsaken by a previous generation and um, now we're getting to hear it with fresh ears. Um, people have been removed from the church and so hearing the gospel with fresh ears. And the gospel really is like you recognize who you are. You are a sinner against God. Every single person on earth, you are a sinner against God. Uh, your self-preference and your self-identity have have led you to forsake and rebel against a pure and holy God, and you are entirely deserving of God's wrath. Uh, you are deserving of death, and you are deserving of an eternity in hell. And I'm included in this, right? We all are. 
um, because we all self-identified at some point in the past. We all sought our own sexual preferences at some time in the past. We we all sought to be who we wanted to be at some time in the past, and our 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 society told us that we could do that. That's the American dream. Well, look at where that got us. That's the message I heard growing up. Look at where it got us. We. We're tearing ourselves apart at the seams, and we are in the midst of one of the worst cultural wars that we have been in the midst of um, that I've seen in my lifetime, um, probably for a long, long, long time. And then here comes the Bible, and, and it says, look, retribution is not the way. Paying retribution is not the way. Affirmative action, not the way. Um, continuing to double down on your self-identity not the way you're not going to be able to achieve peace that way. And we're seeing that bear out in our time. And the Bible was, was right all along. It says, look, the only way, the only way that you're going to see peace in your time is in Christ. And in Christ, there is forgiveness from God, a declaration uh, of peace between God and man. That's what the gospel is. In Christ, there is peace and there is happiness and there is blessing and there is equality that doesn't depend on some form of equity, which is amazing. And I look around and it's like even even people who profess to be Christians don't believe Christ is actually working that out. Uh, and it's like that's what the that's what's happening with the Jews here in Jerusalem in John chapter 12. Jesus has made this claim, I came to end oppression. I came to bring peace. And the Jews don't believe. And I look around and it's like even people who profess to be Christians don't even believe they have present victory in Christ. So here we are living in defeat. We are self-defeatist, right? We are self-defeatists. Our our society has made the uh, self-defeatism popular. Uh, Everybody wants to play the role of a victim rather than actually being a happy and blessed people. And because we are so attached to being victimized, because we identify ourselves as victims, we have to create scenarios in which we have been made victims, even if if we are the freest nation on planet Earth, right? Um, This is a travesty. Uh, It is... It is... A mocking not only of our humanity and a denigration of our humanity, but it is a it is a slap in the face to Jesus Christ, who came to end all that stuff. And here here we are drudging it all up over and over and over again. This has been a vicious cycle throughout human history. None of this is new, right? I hope you read history. None of this is new. It's like we're we're drudging up history over and over again. It's a vicious, vicious, vicious cycle. And here Christ is saying, yeah, in me, all all that will end. And there will be no more racism and there will be no more sexism. You don't need the ways of the world to accomplish that. All, all we need is King Jesus. The only caveat is we have to give up our identities and we have to deny ourselves, which means our preferences all of a sudden don't matter. We have to take up our crosses and follow Jesus if we want to see that in our nation, in our time. Now, Jesus Christ will accomplish this regardless. We can be a part of it or not. He will see it come to pass. All Every knee will bow to King Jesus, whether willingly or unwillingly. That's another resurrection promise, right? That's another Easter promise. But, y'all, I am so tired of people saying, peace, peace, while there is no peace. I am so sick of people claiming to be for the people, but not being for the people. Uh, to them, being for the people means being the, the head of the people. When scripture calls us all to be slaves to one another, most of the people crying out for equality are not making themselves slaves. They're, they're crying out for liberty. And, and therein lies the issue with the the current revival of um, liberation theology. Um, liberation theology is not biblical because the Bible actually calls every Christian to be a slave to his neighbor uh, rather than just do what he wants to do with his own life and rather than be liberated with his own life. Scripture actually calls us to contentment in all circumstances for, for the grace and glory of, of our God. Uh, so it's, it's like all backwards today and the woke church is doing nothing 
uh, to advance the cause of Christ or the cause of Scripture, doing nothing to honor the Easter season, because it's it's all about people, all about what we want, all about how we identify ourselves, all about our politics, all about our religion, all about our churches, all about our gatherings, and and we've completely lost sight of King Jesus. Y'all, if if we were to submit to King Jesus, there'd be no more crying, death, or pain anymore. And there's coming a day, that's the Easter promise, right? There's coming a day when, when Jesus will do away with racism, sexism, crying, death, pain, oppression, all of that. And he is doing so in a peaceful way, not in a violent way. He's doing so through the proclamation of his gospel, and he is overtaking the world by the proclamation of his gospel. And so on this Fig Monday, I just want to I just want to call fellow Christians out here. That's all that's all that's all I want to do is call out fellow Christians here and say, hey, do you actually believe in the messianic promise? Do you actually believe the prophetic vision? Do you actually believe that Jesus meant what he said when he when he promised to renew the world? Are we participating with him or or not? Do we really believe these things that Jesus is bringing peace through means of his gospel, not social justice, not a not a weird sort of societal social gospel or a cultural gospel or a prosperity gospel, but by the the genuine artifact the gospel, human depravity and wretchedness and God's glory and the exaltation of Jesus Christ alone, and salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, and just complete and utter forgiveness, which we don't know. Retribution automatically means you're not forgiving. So that's like, it's all automatically against scripture and against the gospel. So please, please, please return to the gospel. Let us, let us not be like Israel, or these Jews here in verses 37 and 38 of John chapter 12, may, may we not be like that. May we actually believe the promises of Christ, come to Christ, devote ourselves to Christ rather than all the other stuff we can give our time to, job, work, education, whatever. Nothing wrong with those things, but we, we idolaterize them. And then we expect Christ to work for us like he has no obligation to us. He is king. May we prioritize him. And may we prioritize the gathering with his church body. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for joining me at this episode of uh, Passion Week for Black Top Pulpit and the 95. Uh, if you are in Pierce, Arizona or around Pierce, Arizona, if you are anywhere in the Sulphur Springs Valley here uh, or close enough to drive, I, I hope that you come join us on Easter Sunday at 8.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. I have to have to make it a point to to ensure that people know it's Mountain Standard Time because, because uh, the audience is so large here. But if you can make it, 8.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, The Church at Sunsites, 995 Treasure Road, Pierce, Arizona, 85625. And if you can't make it in person, I hope that you catch the service online and we will be talking about the prophetic vision of the resurrection during the sermon time. We'll also have some pretty good music. At least I hear we will have some pretty good music. I will see you then and hopefully you'll catch tomorrow's episode on Holy Tuesday.